Reggie Jackson. By Reggie Johnson. Johnson, I'm sorry. Reggie got in a good right hook. It wasn't hard, but it made Roy Jones understand you're still in a boxing match. It halted the Jones combination flurry. He touches them here and there. He keeps that right hand too low. Meaning Reggie Johnson. Reggie Johnson he drops it. If you're going to drop it low, then put it on the side of your chin that your hand is low, that you're carrying the hand low on. Jones has succeeded in allowing Reggie to get some confidence in the latter round. That's, what, that's something he shouldn't Well, miss. in this round. In this round only. Yeah. Oh, his confidence has never waned. He got up from the floor. Didn't run and hide. When you're in the light heavyweight, you just can't go on one punch. You got to hit, finish it up. Come back with that hook. Left-right combination by Jones. Another left by Jones. Another busted right hand across the chops of Johnson. And this despite the fact that the last minute of the round has been Johnson's best minutes in quite some time. The 1960s were among the most volatile and turbulent decades in American history. In the world of sport, no event would so transcend the playing fields as the 1968 Summer Olympics. In August, Sports of the 20th Century presents Fists of Freedom a documentary which looks back at the origin, the individuals, and the after effects of the moment when African-American athletes changed the face of sports forever. You gotta get closer and let your hands go, man. Do you, you were in Mexico that? City when... You gotta get close and throw combinations, man. You Tommy Smith and John Carlos held their fists up on you the victory stand. Three, mm -hmm. I was five, there. How, how aware were you of their actions and how did it affect you? It affected uh, the uh, Olympic teams more than anything. Inside the village, it had a shock right, effect. No one wanted to lose a teammate. We felt like our teammate had been let's kicked off the team. It scared us. We were hurt. No matter who you are, we didn't understand the media aspect of it. Did it influence your decision to wave little American flags after you won your gold medal, or was that something you would have done anyway? Well, I think even Tommy Smith and John Carlo really were there because of that flag. Don't forget that. They had something else to say. I couldn't play. These were patriotic guys. Harold, how'd you have it through six? Jim, I think this is incredible. Six to nothing, 60 to 52, Roy Jones Jr. I mean, I've never seen such an incredible performance of speed and power. He's fighting a good light heavyweight. This is no slouch in there, and he's doing everything. Doubling his left hooks, great right hand leads, pounding away at the body, good defense, good ring generalship, stays away from Johnson's shots. I think it's all Roy Jones, and I think it's a heck of a performance he's put on against a real good fighter. We showed you copy box numbers coming into the fight that showed Reggie Johnson had landed close to 40% of his punches against his last two opponents. Tonight, 33 out of 205, 16% connect percentage. Just can't get anything going against Jones, and Jones is landing more than half his punches. Jones is starting to use the left jab at the beginning of the round. He's jab, double jab, and things of that nature also. Just doesn't have the confidence when, once he gets the guy on the, on the ring, on the, on the, on the ropes. Road. Yeah. Yeah. Seem to want to pull him back off every time. Now, if you're ready, you exploit that. Do what you're going to do and go back to the ropes. Reggie Johnson with a hard right hand to the body. Jones pops and moves. Reggie going to the body, but it's not about wearing the body down. He's trying to load this guy into a hard, straight left hand. Now, when Roy Jones Jr. gets on the rope, he doesn't have any room to plant and further move his uh, right foot. So then he's vulnerable. Now he gets back into the middle of the ring, where he's been able to land that right hand lead at will. Yes, because he's able to spread that leg. The right leg gets further and further back. Reggie's corner told him to get on this guy. They were exactly correct. It takes courage. And after using the right hand lead almost exclusively for the first five rounds, Jones in the last two rounds begins, as George Foreman points out, to land the left jab. And that sets up stuff like this. And a good body shot by Roy Jones for the first time. He's going to the body. Sends Johnson into the peekaboo stance, fires combinations. We've seen what he can do to the body. 
Now, you notice Johnson on the rope. He's able to exploit Roy Jones Jr. Gets back to the middle of the ring. Nothing there. Got to hit him and slide back into that uncertain territory. Reggie Johnson just trying to land something, throwing soft punches to the chest of Roy Jones. Listen, let's, let's, let's get it up. It's getting dangerous, but out here it's getting dangerous. Right here, bro. Go ahead, shoot. All over here. All right. He's leaning to it. Made it to the back. He's leaning to the left. He goes south, or he might be able to get a hook in. He's leaning over to the left a lot. I'm trying to see what you can see. He's trying to get a right up to the end, too. Or right hand. Let's go nullify his hook. If you turn south, you're going to be further away from the hook than you are with the day up on the next thing. Get on him when you hit him. Another look at Roy Jones's combination punching ability as Reggie Johnson comes back with some stuff to the body. And Jones says, Yes, those, those are my ribs. Now here's my right hand. Reggie Johnson averaging only 33 punches per round and landing fewer than 20% of them now tries to start off round eight with a rally. Do you notice whenever he's up close throwing shots? Nothing happened to him. You got to keep on him. Stay right on him. It's a safety zone there. You get a corner man, you get coaches, it's supposed to study the film, find out your safety zone, find out your power shots, what, what can happen in what spot of the gym. You don't follow a guy everywhere. Reggie Johnson has been on the canvas twice. Knocked down in the first, knocked down in the third. Both times by straight right hands. He was also cut over the right eye in the first round. Maybe by Jones' straight right hand. Maybe by an unintentional headbutt. Hard to tell. That goes again. That's the safety zone. You want to keep that up. If you're Reggie, stay right there. Don't get back. Only to rest. The late rounds of his battle with Lou Duval at Madison Square Garden last summer. Up to the body hurt Reggie. Yeah, that was that was a hard left hand body shot right there by uh, Roy Jones. Yep. I was about Reggie to say trying to recuperate. He's moving around because of it. And Jones fires his straight right upstairs, trying to take advantage. Now popping the jab. Roy was able to allow him to recuperate, so now he's going to go right back to getting him into the rope. There used to be a time when Roy Jones didn't want to fight southpaws, didn't like fighting. Now he's gotten so used to it, he's creating more and more ways of attacking against the southpaw. You notice he never changes anything about himself. He doesn't look to plant his left foot anywhere. He just boxes as though he's fighting a regular right-hander. Short straight time, he's defended his title against the southpaw, and he's not really worried about it anymore. I was going to say, uh, George, that in the later rounds of his battle with Dudeval last summer in Madison Square Garden in New York, Jones clearly got bored and distracted. And it helped lead to the first knockdown of his career as Duval was able to knock him down. Johnson has to be hoping that Roy's mind will wander again as he has completely dominated the first seven rounds. Another thing you can pay some attention to, the referees. Whenever Reggie gets Roy on the rope, the referee comes in and says, get back. Now, wait a minute. You can still fight on the rope. Star-studded crowd in Biloxi. Evander Holyfield across the ring in the middle of your shot, looking right at you. And farther over to the left extreme edge of the screen, right behind Roy Jones, is Michael Jordan. Everybody loves to come to boxing matches. That's it. on that side. We're in Mississippi. Mississippi. Glamour, the puff. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. 
put them on top of the jump. Let's uh, over here, Let's try to put them three, put three together, please. Body punishment, George. You know, Roy Jones had started just whenever he wanted to, but that's the that's his ooh, calling card. Throw hard shots to the body. Another. Those things hurt. Second. Let's go, corner. When your corner telling you to go. Norma Johnson's son Reggie, way down in the fight. Way behind on the scorecards. Roy Jones leaking about a gallon of water onto the ring canvas right now. I don't know how they're going to keep their footing in this corner of the ring because Roy came back in as though he had just emerged from the shower. Reggie picks up the pace a little bit, trying to find a way. Jones's hand speed still there. Hard right to the body by Reggie Johnson. And the blood begins to flow again. Next to Reggie's right eye. How about the cut in the corner of the eye like that, George? Bothersome because the blood trickles in? Yes, yeah, bothersome. And also, it, if people don't understand that blood, losing blood in a boxing match, sure can make you weak. Even from the small cuts. Small cuts. Every bit of your body you've been training for months, you haven't been bleeding in the gym. You need every drop. Only he can make Roy Jones lose his temper a little bit and just get wild like that. Then Reggie's in business. You want him to keep doing that. That's the only chance that Reggie can get something in himself. Partially blocked right hand shot. Jones loading up right hands and trying to look for a knockout here. And for a moment, he lost his concentration and started winging him a little without any accuracy. And that's when you want to counter. But Reggie didn't counter. And Reggie, uh, like I said, the losing of the blood, the knockdown, spins at his legs a few times. The discouragement, the confusion, the blinding hand speed of Roy Jones. The counter punches that hurt. The fact that it's a hard sport, not an easy sport. The fact that you train months to get yourself ready for disappointment like this, if you're Reggie Johnson, it's tough. Yeah, but the fight goes on. You gotta think like the hare in the tortoise face. Let, let the rabbit get away. Win the race, thinking he's winning. When he goes to sleep, you pass him up. That was the first jab that Reggie was able to land that time. Hard right hand lands for Jones. Little left hook behind it. Straight right hand lands again. Johnson not punching as Jones goes to work. Those body shots, they hurt. Wins the ninth round by about six miles. All right, we run around. That's all I want. In two separate rounds here tonight, by copy of box numbers, Reggie Johnson has landed one punch in one round, two punches in another round. Jones, you'll recall, once held Vinny Pazienza to zero connects for a complete round. That's the only time in the history of CompuBox punch counting that a fighter held an opponent without a connect in an entire round. Harold 
Letterman, how do you have it through nine? Jim, you know, those numbers only point out the fact that you have to give Roy Jones credit for great defense as well as ring generalship and great punching. 90 to 79, nine rounds to nothing, Roy Jones Jr. I think he's just pitching a shot out. I think it's one of the best performances I ever saw him put on against the current reigning world champion. I mean, this is some performance by Jones. Quick, he's got as much speed now as he did in the first round. Don't only the two two-point rounds. Jim, let me point out something. I'm away I've just warned Roy Jones for measuring Reggie Johnson. Some referees will let you get away with it as long as you keep the glove closed. Elmo's not letting Roy measure Reggie Johnson. He wants him to pull the left arm back. Uh, George? Jones just so much quicker. I think the biggest mistake for Reggie was to get in that knockout in the last to win the world championship by way of knockout. Started put a lot of confidence into power that just was not there tonight. Well, but he was perfectly satisfied to go for the decision against Will Taylor uh, a few months ago to set this fight up. Maybe he felt coming in tonight as though his best chance was going to be to knock Roy out. Yeah, but it seems to me all night he's been waiting to counter and get in one big shot. Johnson was very respectful of Jones in pre-fight publicity. When he came to news conferences to promote the fight, as was the case here in the past week, he said, hey, I'm the underdog, and I ought to be the underdog. Everybody knows who Roy is, but I'm planning to win the fight in big style. Roy is totally dropping his hands as though he has no regard, no respect for Reggie now. Well, I think he feels as though he's taken all the snap out of Reggie's punches with his body punching and the punishment he's dealt out. And he still possesses his speed. I'm Reggie. Put my feet together and start walking this guy down, throwing hard shots. Low blow by Johnson. Jones points it out to Adolf. Adolf properly warns Reggie to keep him up. You see, when you're fighting a guy and he spreads his legs, he's farther and farther away from you. What do you want to do? Don't spread yours also. Bring those feet together and walk them down, keeping the feet no, mo no more than one foot apart from one another. Looks like it's a lesson Johnson will have to learn for another fight. As Reggie Johnson landed in double figures by CompuBox punch down. You got two rounds left in your match. He got to catch up. We ain't got to catch up. Don Turner wants to know if uh, Reggie's got two rounds left in it. Just keep your arm busy like you did that round. You make a mistake, don't you do stuff. would have something to say about right now. He's saying it at home. <laughs> Call us up, Larry. Elsewhere in Mississippi, at the United States Women's Open Golf Championships, Reggie Johnson's punch stat numbers would make a pretty good scorecard. Uh oh be the only player in the field with a hole in one. And I was saying earlier, when the, when the puncher spreads his leg, don't you spread yours also. You bring your feet closer together and march him down. You all right? Huh? All right, hold on. Box, let's go. See how far Reggie's left hand is from yeah. Roy Jones? Yeah. Brings his foot up just a little closer. Bring it up a little closer. Don't spread your leg. Brings his foot up closer and goes to the body with the left hand. He's in business. Jones 
continuing to add polish to what has been a brilliant, dominant performance against Reggie Johnson so far. Johnson, a seasoned professional, has to be totally realistic about the scorecards, looking for some way to find a knockout opportunity. I think the crowd made Roy Jones start picking up the punches. You think the crowd was too yeah. quiet for his The crowd started to boo just a little bit, and he didn't like that. He's a performer like anyone else, or like <laughs> any other rapper. I want the crowd to boo you. Pounding right, Johnson back into the ropes with right hands. Body punching this time. Oh, hold on. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Get out. But for something. He didn't expel too much energy in the middle round, sir. Round 11 will come to a close. Another dominant performance by Jones. Okay, let's go around, baby. Wipe that floor. You here, baby. You want another call on your back? Let's go around. Make it fine. You can't win unless you knock you out, baby. On his back, dog. Where you working? I know it's tight. Talk with me next week. Last round. Relax, man. Let's get this. Last round, man. Come on, man. Last round. Last round, Last champ. Round. Come out and touch gloves, okay? That's it. Okay. Last round, champ. Come out and touch gloves. Come here, sir. Hey, baby. All right. Yeah. All right, sir. Reggie Johnson has never had a 12th round knockout in his career. In round 11, by CompuBox numbers, he landed two out of 32 punches, another terrific golf score. And Roy Jones was relaxed enough to say hello to the round card girl as she passed by his corner. Means he's paying attention to the rounds, huh? There you go. He, he was pleased to see that it was round 12, I guess. So here's the last stanza of what has been so far a virtuoso demonstration of the most incomparable set of talents in the sport of boxing. One thing I can say about Oscar De La Hoya, a fight is going like this, he will take a chance. He didn't care, he'll go for a knockout. Hey, listen, you used the right word for De La Hoya earlier. His courage is proven, and few fighters have had more chances to prove it because of the tough circumstances he's been in. De La Hoya is high on my list. I think number 10 as far as courage, as far as everyone else being number seven and eight. Roy Jones, however, has all of these gifts in his arsenal. And now Jones choosing whether to go all out in, in uh, an effort to close the show with a flourish or simply taking what will be an overwhelmingly easy decision while Reggie Johnson continues to look for an opportunity to land one overwhelming, life-changing shot. You know, Mohammed Ali was kind of like that. Get a hit on the pipe. Never wanting to hurt the other guy too much. Well, there's so much moisture in Jones's corner. It's not surprising that Johnson went down. That was another hard right-hand lead by Roy Jones. Roy Jones got a little mercy in his gloves, too. Now Reggie Johnson wants to fire the jab. Jones is saying to himself, look, this guy didn't disrespect me. He stayed in his place. I'm just going to be satisfied and just win in the fight because there were some opportunities for him to really hurt Reggie. He didn't do it. Jones appreciates professionalism, and he was quoted several times before this fight saying, hey, I respect Reggie. He's a champion and a pro fighter and, and somebody who's really good. I'm just going to beat him. He's doing the old cat and mouse game now. Hit your hole. Don't punch inside. Don't get wrestled. Let's punch inside. Reggie 
Reggie Johnson talking to Jones now as we come down the stretch. Reggie's mom and dad can be proud. He finished. Got up and kept fighting. Let's go. Get up. Break it through. Break it through. They could have been proud even if he were knocked out. There's no embarrassment in losing to as great a fighter as Roy Jones Jr. a little air of anti-climax for the crowd as they feel they've known who the winner would be since round one. Probably most were hoping to see a knockout as the icing on the cake, but uh, Reggie Johnson able to go the distance, although overwhelmed by the multiple talents of Jones. Here's the hard right hand and the slip in the Jones corner. There you go. This close to being a knockdown, Roy? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, that was power right behind it, but the slip is what it was all about. Freudian slip, me calling you Roy. Your brother Roy, seated over here <laughs> at ringside. Your buddy Roy up here in the ring. Just don't call me too late for dinner. No one ever has, have they? <laughs> Not yet. And some highlights now of the 12 rounds of dominance by Jones against Reggie Johnson. It started in round number one. Boy. Great right hands, knocked down. And then in round three, more of the same. This one will be a left hand to set it up, and then the other straight right, knocked down again. And then through the closing rounds, there were some brutal body shots. Here's in round four, more of Jones with the right hand. And that brutal body shot with the left hand oh, we gotta in round eight. Down, Number one, I told y'all. Hard to imagine that he lost a round. Let's go to Michael Buffer to hear the scores. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. All three judges, Paul Sita, Koba Jesus, and Chuck Hassett, score the belt 120 to 106 for the winner, who is now the unified light heavyweight champion of the world from Pensacola, Florida, Roy. Final copy box numbers, and uh, these will be as lopsided as any you've ever seen. Jones outlanding Johnson by 224 punches. Jones throwing 140 more punches than Johnson. Johnson landing at a connect percentage of 13%, about one-third the rate at which he was landing punches against other fighters coming in. And 52% uh, connect percentage for Roy. Roy, you getting a look at these uh, total punch numbers? Yeah, you're familiar with this stuff. From when you're 30 years old, you know, sometimes things seem a little different. But first, I'd like to thank uh, God for giving me the opportunity for blessing me to come out and perform the way I do. I love everybody. I'd like to say what's up to all the troops up in Kosovo. Uh, happy birthday to all my friends around the world. Happy Mother's Father's Day. Anything I might have missed because I've been off the air for a while. But um, I really enjoy performing for my people. I really love fighting. I really enjoy doing what I do. And I love when I have good competition. If Larry was here, Larry would say, Roy, did he hurt you at any time in the fight? Larry, nah, he didn't hurt me. He got heavy hands, but he's much too slow for me. Do you feel it? Do you feel as though fighting all the left hands got you properly prepared for Red Johnson? Well, you know, it's kind of like I know how to fight any hand of a guy. You know, I'm exactly this left hand, the right hand. I know how to do what it takes to win. So when Roy Jones comes out there, Roy Jones comes out there to do what it takes to win. And that's all Roy's about. What's up, Big George? Any other Larry questions you know of at this well, point? Larry probably got a lot of them for me, but I asked him when I see him. I knew those would be two. So I did that for my boy Larry, because Larry, right, Larry has learned to love me, you know, and I really appreciate that. Well, there are a lot of people uh, who are learning to love you and your talent. This was a big occasion. I know I know there was special satisfaction in the first round knockout of Montel Griffin when you right. were avenging that uh, disqualification. Right. Uh, this was uh, as great a performance as you could possibly have put together for 12 rounds in our eyes. You agree? Yeah, because you got to think about it. Anytime you bring somebody that thinks they can beat me, I love it. And I like Reggie. I enjoy Reggie coming. My father worked with Reggie and got Reggie real good. But the one time I sparred with Reggie, I knew I was much too fast for Reggie. That's why I sparred one round and got on because I knew I could beat him. My father didn't think we'd fight, but I knew we'd fight. And, you know, sometimes, like I said, 
did, God tells people things through other sources. So God was telling me that this day would come, so I was prepared for it. I knew I just had to be in good shape. Thank for the basketball. Basketball got me excellent shape. Thank Rick Mar Rex Morgan and the Gulf Coast Sun Dogs because they helped me. They worked hard. We ran a lot, and that took my mind off of boxing, which didn't make it so boring for me to get prepared for this fight. Yeah, it's good to do nine different things. Now, uh, was there a temptation in the later rounds, because the crowd got a little bored, was there a temptation in the later rounds to